recent, recent changes in the political world this past week. You know, and social media is just outrage. I mean, there's many people that are happy, some that are sad, and you can see this tension going back and forth. And so when it comes to our Christianity, uh, some of us probably are getting sucked into this stuff, right? You know, what's going to happen with our country? What are we going to do? Uh, uh, we're, we're, we're doomed. It's just, it's just not good for us. And so God is, is at the center of this. And so I want us to kind of look at this frame of reference that I put together that I think that we need to be very mindful about. You know when it comes to our Christianity and so Christianity now I feel that's it's becoming more of a kind of a cliche now right it's just a word it's just it just it could be more even this you know construed or overused you know at this point of time right now and and it's I think people think about Christianity as oh if I just believe this in my heart if or somehow it's Christianity is just floating in the air, right? And somehow we're going to catch Christianity and we're going to be in this right relationship with Christ. And see, that's not what Christianity is about. It's a lifestyle. It's something that's, that we need to be uh, living and breathing each and every day. What are we striving for? And so uh, we're seeing Christians now, they're... We're getting, we're getting sucked in. Churches are being divided. Relationships are being torn. And it's not so much about Christianity so much. It's more about who did you vote for? Who do you believe in? And then depending on who you believe in, well, this is just going to just, they're going to maul you. I mean, they just, they're just going to come after you. You know, and if you if you for this particular side, you can post, you can, you know, everybody's high fiving this. Oh, this is great. Yeah, we're, we're we made it. We made it. This is our time to shine. We're, everything is going to be peaches and cream right now. And if you if you post on the other side of it, well, you're wrong, and they gonna they gonna come right after you, right? And so, what we're going to talk about this morning, I'm kind of. I'm going to stay into the uh, book of 1 Samuel in chapter 8. And, and I'm kind of hone in on verses 7 through 22. I'm going to get a little bit more of a kind of a summation of, of what, what was going on uh, in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 8, starting in verse, verse, in verse 7. But before I get into that, uh, as a little bit of a backdrop. The Israelites wanted a king. And Samuel was getting old. He had two sons. And as he was looking to appoint his sons, uh, both of his sons didn't really have a good track record. You know, they, they were taking bribes, dishonest gain. And so the elders got together and they said, look, we, we want a king. Your sons are not right in, in God's eyes and so we want someone else and so that made Samuel pretty upset and so Samuel being godly he went to God and God said no this is what you tell the people and so in verse 7 talks about God telling Samuel look it's not about you they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. This bottom line, this is this is who they are rejecting right now. And so God is telling telling Samuel that, hey, just just go to the people, give give them what they want, listen, listen to what they have to say, and we'll give them what they want. And so in verse 10, uh, God gives 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 uh, kind of, a, I guess, a, some, some warnings what's going to take place. And, uh, and I read a little, a little bit of this. So uh, 
Samuel spoke all the words of the Lord to the people who had asked of him a king. He said, this will be the procedure of the king who will reign over you. He will take your sons and place them for himself and his chariots and among his horsemen, and they will run before his chariots. He will appoint for himself commanders of thousands and of fifties, and some do this plowing and to reap his harvest and to make his weapons of war and equipment for his chariots. He will also take your daughters for perfumers and cooks and bakers. I'm just gonna stop right there and we'll read a little bit more. So if we can start to get, you know, again, a, kind of a point of view what's gonna take place, right? So this is not going to be uh, all good for, for the Israelites. So God, God has given, again, he's feeding Samuel that it's going to be a lot more than what what the people are, are, are bargaining for, right? And so when we again when we reflect in, in life, you know, again regardless of who who's in office, they're in the office now, right? This is nothing we can do that's going to change that. We can we can we can voice all our frustrations or our support. But at the end of the day, they're still there. But as a Christian, what are we supposed to do? Jesus, when he just ascended to heaven, what did he tell his disciples? Go out and spread the gospel. He didn't say, okay, now when it gets difficult, you just keep quiet, go along with whatever is going on in the world. He said, go out and spread the gospel with it. That's, that's it. That's where the rubber meets the road at. And so as Christians, that's where we have to be centered in. We're not going to change the world. We're not going to change the world. You know, and God is in control of this ship. And this is what he's trying to tell Samuel. As Samuel looks at this, he's looking at what he feels is right. But God is telling him, don't worry about this. I got this covered. They're going to get more than what they bargained for, okay? So, uh, in, in uh, verse uh, 14, he said, I will make the best of your fields and your vineyards and your uh, olive groves and to give them to his servants. He will take a tenth of your seed and of your vineyards and give to his officers and to his servants. He will also take your male servants and your female servants and the best of your young men and your donkeys and use them for his work. Now, again, when you think about the best of the best, uh, uh, no one wants to short end of the stick, right? We, when, when you're looking for a king, when you're looking for, hey, this is who I support, this, everything's gonna be all good. Well, it's gonna, they're gonna be probably some, some bad in there too, right? So in life, we have to take the good with the bad. It's not going to be all good, right? It's going to be some bad mixed into this. And then there's going to be some people that's going to suffer behind these consequences. And it's not anything that we can do that's going to stop that. There's no frustration in the world that's going to change it. You know, it's just not going to change that, change the stuff. Now, in verse in verse 17, to kind of continue... Um, he said, I, he said we will, he will take a tenth of your flocks and you yourselves will become his servants. Well, that's, 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 not, that's not good. Uh, well, that's, you know, that's, that's not what we, what we would bargain for, right? So when we appoint a king, this should be, hey, this is what's in it for me because we want a king, right? So we got to I mean, we got to be careful what we wish for, right? And so this... The kind of the point of what uh, uh, Samuel is writing here, what God has d delivered for him to write. He said, then you will cry out in that day because of your king whom you have chosen for yourselves, but the Lord will not answer you in that day. Right. Again, it goes back to, you know, again, some of the, kind of some of the images, you know, as I was kind of forming this lesson over the weekend, 
I actually had another lesson that I had prepared to do, and then Saturday just kind of hit me that morning, and I said, "It God to me, God led me to to, to write it." And I ended up doing a Facebook post, and I shared it with kind of with the public. But uh, you know, again, it gets into uh, uh, again, be careful. Because you, again, you don't know, there, there's good and bad how things come in life. And, and as Christians, we have, to, we, have to, we have to decide what does God want us to do, and then that's what we should be going towards. Because the world is watching. And if, if we don't pay attention to what we're doing, then what happens? We get sucked right in with it. You know, we're, we're doomed, the world's going to end. You know, we don't know what, what this nation's going to be like. Who is in control? Who is in control? We're not in control. Right? And this is what God is telling Samuel. Just listen to the people, and I'm going to give them what they want, but I'm going to give them a lot more than what they bargained for. Right? So, and... and in verse 19, he said, Nevertheless, the people refused to listen to the voice of Samuel. And he said, No, but there should be a king over us, and that we may be like all the nations, that our king may judge us and go out before us and fight our battles. Right? Got to be careful who we hand the keys to. Right? And... <clears throat> But the people were defiant, right? We've seen a big shift in our political world, right? You know, this, this, is what, this, is the, this is the course that we're going to chart, and everything is going to be good. Everything's going to feed in that narrative. The media, everybody's going to feed into it. This is all good, folks. Buy into it. Tune in 24-7. We got you covered. You got you covered, whether it's in the news, we got you covered on the social media pages, we got, got you covered in your workplace, we got you covered in your homes, we got you covered everywhere. What are you going to do about that? Well, God gives us a frame of reference of what we should be doing. As Christians, we're supposed to be set apart from that. Popularity is not going to get us to heaven. Now, un unlike... What the world tells us today, we're not we're not going to get there. And so, in verse twenty one, after Samuel heard these words, now he repeated them in the Lord's hearing. He didn't like it, right? And there are things that we're not going to like either. But God is again telling Samuel, "I am in control. Listen to me." Go out and give the people what they want. It's just like our world right now. God is in control of what's going on and what has happened. I don't care how many years we can go back. So God, I believe, is going to show, show us a lot more than what a lot of people are bargaining for. I believe that. We're going, to, we're going to get run for our money. And as Christians, what are we supposed to be doing? Okay? So, for us, we're supposed to be living godly lives and spreading, and spreading the message. That's it, plain and simple. That's, that's our mission. And we're supposed to be fighting for what's right versus looking in the world. We can't change it. Well, we shouldn't have wished that wouldn't happen. What are we going to do? The world's going to end. Our tax is going to go up. Yes, a lot of things probably want to happen. That's true. But we can't change it. But what we can do is spread the gospel. This world, if I had to take a stab at it, probably 95% is in the dark. They're in the dark. They're bombarded with the world and they want to stay in it. And if you stay in the world, you're going to die in it. But Satan, this is this is where he has the wheel, and he's 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 waiting pretty much to be at point blank range. He's right there, and the only thing going to separate you from the devil is going to be in God. That's it. 
That's where the strength is going to come in at. It's not going to come in with this world. You're going to get sucked in. You're going to be walking around your head down kicking cans. Well, the world, this and that. We got this uproar with this tension here. We got, we got racial tension. We got this. We got that. What are we going to do? We're going to, what are we going to do? God's telling us what we need to do. He's telling Samuel what he needs to do, and I'm going to cover the rest, and they're going to realize it's going to be a lot more than what they ask for. Be careful what you ask for. Be careful what you support as Christians, because as Christians, it should be a very narrow path. Serve God, if, if again, if you're serious about getting to heaven. That's, that's where it comes down to. How serious is heaven to each individual? If it's not that serious, so be it. Because it's easy to be... When I think about people that's not living Christian lives, they can be who they want. right? And that's fine. That's their choice. But as a Christian, see, the world is watching what we're doing. Right? So if you feel like, yeah, yeah, I don't know about this Christian stuff today, I'll, yeah, I'll just blend in with the crowd. Yeah, this is bad. You're right. Yeah, well, this, this is not good. I support it. I'm with you. I support that. Sure call. But what does God tell you to do? You see, the world is looking at Christianity and looking at the ones that, uh, that what I call, that I'm in the, Lord will, I'm in the process of writing a, a lesson about it. Uh, mention it right now, I was going to call it clutch Christians. When I say clutch Christians, I mean, I, I kind of put it in relation to like football, right? I always like to watch quarterbacks that can, can, can be under pressure and can still deliver, right? And that's what I call us right now. We're, we're, we're clutch Christians. We're going to have to be clutch Christians. Because the tide is thick. And it's going to get thicker with changes now that's going to bleed into uh, un going in a path of more ungodliness. The scriptures tells us about different things in the Bible that God condemns. And if we support that, then How's the world or somebody's going to look at your Christianity? They're watching. God's watching, number one. That's the real deal. He's, he's watching. So, in, chapter, in, in, in verse uh, 22, he, the Lord said to Samuel, <clears throat> Listen to their voice and appoint them a king. And so Samuel said to the men of Israel, for every man to a city. So at that point, Samuel said, okay, I've done everything I could, but God has, has heard what I've said, and now God is going to do what he has to do. And so that's where we're at. To me, we're in this, we're in this strong, uh, what I call kind of this undercurrent from a political standpoint, <coughs> And our Christianity is, 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 is being tested more than ever now. So we either, what I call kind of come up swinging as Christians, with, you know, or we stay dormant and just let the world take us over and we just continue to be frustrated with the world that we can't change. Or we get up and say, no, we're clutch Christians. When God needs me the most, I'm going to be in I'm going to be in that clutch. So when the world comes after me, uh, I'm ready for them. So as we get ready to, uh, you know, close this lesson, you know, think about, you know, think about your Christianity and 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 the connection you have with with God, because now more than ever, we're going to be tested to the fullest. And you have to ask yourself, are you ready to be a clutch Christian? Because now the, the defenders, they're, they're coming after you. They're coming after you. Everything's full. It's, it, the floodgates open. Everything's open. Everything's wide open. 
People are getting put into place, and we're going to just we're going to tear all this stuff up. We're going to tear all this Christianity stuff up. So right now, is to me is is politics versus Christianity. The guys is in control, but he's looking for his clutch Christians. You got to ask yourself: You're going to be a clutch Christian, or you're going to fold under the pressure and you're going to get tackled and you're going to be left there. You'll be left to die. That's just plain and simple. That's that's where the rubber meets the road, and that's that's where we're at right now. So, uh, as we as we close, uh, let's think about that. Let's be mindful of our Christianity. Let's be mindful of our children, our families, our strength, and our faith uh, as we get ready uh, to sing.